Still in my top five, but it is number five, and that is a 1981 film, Halloween 2. I uh, love that it picks off right from the, uh, you know, from the beginning uh, of where, you know, the original ended. It picks up right there. Love the intro, you know, the, you know, Dr. Loomis. Uh, then, you know, the, the neighbor saying, this is some kind of Halloween prank. Uh, you know, I just love that. And then he goes, you don't know what death is. And it just cuts to the credits. And I like the soundtrack uh, to this film. I think that they, they changed it up a little bit. It has this gothic, uh, kind of dark tone to it. Uh, it's really cool. I do enjoy that. enjoy the score. The acting. You have Dr. Loomis, uh, Lori. Uh, Dick Warlock is Michael Myers, who I think did a really good job. Uh, a little bit shorter. But, uh, well, I've actually heard that a lot of people say that he's a little bit shorter. But me, personally, I never really noticed it. I think he looks really uh, good as Michael, you know, with the mask on and the suit. I thought his portrayal was really good. Um, I like how that it's in a hospital and it's very low lighting, uh, very dark. I just love the atmosphere. And I just one thing I want to say: Where are the people in the hospital? Where's the patients? Where are the um, the crew members? There's like four. <laughs> But uh really enjoy Halloween 2. I love that it's a direct continuation from the you know from the original film. Uh it's right there. It's more than that he came home. So Halloween 2. And the next one uh is one I absolutely love. I grew up with it and a lot of people think it's overrated and you know I don't think so. I, I just enjoy it. It's just one film that I can watch over and over again, never get tired of. Uh, me and my brother used to watch him when, uh, well, when I was little. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how old I was when I first saw this, but I was fairly young. I was scared of Freddy Krueger, but I just I love this film. I used to rent it with uh, Part Four all the time, and that is a 1987 film, Nightmare on Elm Street Three, The Dream Warriors. And I wish that, uh, well, Dream Warriors, not the Dream Warriors, but I wish that they would have went with uh, Wes Craven's original script. I mean, I love this film, but Freddy would have been far darker than he was in the original. Uh, he had some major <laughs> plans for the third one. Uh, very, very dark uh, script. Very dark uh, Freddy. Uh, it would have been really cool to see what would happen, but I'm glad we got this. Uh, directed by Chuck Russell, um, starring uh, Heather Langenkamp. She's back as Nancy, which is awesome. You have... Um, I forgot her dad, uh, her dad's name and the actor's name. I think it's, it's John Saxon, but I forgot the forgot the guy's name in in the film. Uh, but anyway, you have uh, Patrick Arquette, you have uh, King K, which is one of my favorite characters. You have Joey, Philip, Taryn, uh, Jennifer, uh, Kristen. Already said her. Uh, those are the Dream Warriors, and I love the soundtrack. I love the kills. I think Freddy looks really good in this film. The special effects are great. The dream sequences are great. Uh, the humor of Freddy is balanced so well. He has, I wouldn't say comedic moments. They're just really cruel jokes. He's really having fun killing these kids. Uh, to me, it didn't go over the top of the humor. I think it's balanced out perfectly. Uh, I just love this film. I love the soundtrack done by Dawkins. Well, most of it done by Dawkin, uh, Into the Fire, and, uh, you know, the main theme, Dream Warriors. I uh, just love this film to death. Uh, definitely, definitely, uh, you know, give all these films a watch. Uh, but check this one out if you're a fan of Nightmare on Elm Street films. Definitely love that one. Now, moving on to number three. Uh, the next two are ones that I just never really considered sequels. I considered them to be standalone films. Uh, but they are technically sequels, so they're on this list. Uh, number three is a 1978 film done by George Romero, and that is Dawn of the Dead. I love this film. Definitely a, one of the best zombie films of all time, uh, if not the best. In my opinion, you have uh, Ken Foree. You have... Uh, just let me read it off here. Um, i trying to think of the names. Scott H. Reiniger, who I think he played Peter. Uh, I'm trying to think. I get their names mixed up. I get Ken Forey's name mixed up with uh with Scott Reiniger. Uh, but those are definitely my two favorite characters. You have Flyboy and you know his you know his wife. I think it's his wife or his girlfriend. I'm not really for sure. I don't know if it really touches down on that. I'm I'm thinking it's his wife because they're you know she's pregnant. 
Um, but I just, I love the characters. You really uh, get a lot of character development in this film because you spend a lot of time with the characters. Um, I thought the special effects were well done to be 1978. I thought they were really well done to be 1978. It has a very good uh, 70s atmosphere to it. Um, and I'm one reason it's because the blood. It's just like every Dario Argento or Lucio Fulci film. It's a very bright, uh, well, a very bright red color and I love that because it just uh it makes me uh it just feels like it's a seventies film. It just adds to the seventies atmosphere and you know it makes me know, hey, you're watching a seventies film because the the blood is just so over the top. It's just so red and it's cool. I love it. I love the, the color of it. I love the makeup. Uh even though, you know, some people nowadays would think the makeup would be stupid because it's like a bluish tint or like a bluish grey tint. I love it. I love the special effects of my Tom Savini. Uh, I was trying to think of what else to say. The uh, soundtrack by uh, Goblin, really well done. I just love this film. I could go on and talk about it a lot more, but I'm trying to hurry up because this is almost a 20-minute video. Uh, it, it's Dawn of the Dead, one of the most uh, influential uh, zombie films of all time. Definitely, uh, definitely some tried to, uh, to kind of... I wouldn't say recreate it, but some tried to uh, tried to copy it and they failed. A lot of them did. I don't know if there's a better zombie film than this. Now going on to number two, and that is a 1985 film, and in my opinion, a better film than Gone of the Dead. I might get a lot of hate for that, but it's Day of the Dead. I love Day of the Dead. I said there might not be a better zombie film than this. Uh, well, I think that maybe I like this a little bit more. Uh, I want to say social commentary. I think this area is probably a little bit better. Uh, but Day of the Dead, I think the effects are definitely better. I personally like the characters. Um, I don't know. I think the characters are both an even, uh, or <laughs> even in both. Sorry. Um, I just there's something about Day of the Dead I love. I think the soundtrack's really good. The special effects. I love the effects and Dawn, but. This film, oh my god, I thought the effects were awesome. The eye ripping out, the, I mean, just, te the zombies tearing people apart. I was just blown away by it, by the, you know, the first time I seen it. Um, I just love this film. The soundtrack, the acting, the characters, uh, just has a really good atmosphere to it. I own, I think, uh, three copies of this film, so I definitely love Day of the Dead. And it's my second favorite horror sequel. Uh, now the first one... I know, you know, some people may disagree and ask me, why is this one my number one favorite horror sequel? Well, it's one of the, the first horror films I ever saw. My brother's friend, uh, you know, let us borrow it, and uh, somehow I got it late at night, uh, very late at night, and watched it, and I've loved it ever since. Uh, one of the, the first horror series uh, I've ever got into, and that is a 1987 film. Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn. I uh, love the still book. This is probably my favorite Blu-ray in my collection. Just because I've always wanted this. I always thought it looked cool. On the back there. I just, I love this film, man. I think Bruce Campbell is awesome as Ash. Ash is one of my favorite. Uh, and that's the thing. I love that, you know, I love, you know, heroines. But this is one of the few horror series that actually have a male lead in every film you know he's the set guy for all three of the films and i even like the remake a lot of people don't but i like all the evil dead films uh but my personal favorites are the ones with bruce campbell and this is my favorite out of all of them i just think that uh in my opinion like how nightmare on Elm street 3 is how it balances the humor and the horror perfectly i think this does the same thing there's a lot of uh you know good moments good scary moments good jump scare moments uh very good makeup but then there's a lot of, you know, kind of funny, you know, moments in the film. They definitely stepped up, in my opinion, the uh, the special effects, the gore, the makeup. Uh, I just think the Ash is more manlier in this film, which I love because I love the original film. But he was, he was very uh, not <laughs> in the fight. He was just not really there most of the time. He'd just get shoved around. I love the way the Ash is in this film. He's uh, a badass hero. And I love it. I uh, love the ending. Um, you know, I think the first couple minutes are... Uh, I love the whole film entirely, but the first, uh, I want to say about 15 minutes, 
it's good with just Bruce Campbell. He really does good and entertaining, but I think it really gets good towards the middle of the film. Uh, just love Evil Dead 2. One of my childhood favorites. Uh, a film I could watch over and over again. So those are my top uh, twenty, well, top 10 uh, horror sequels. One to say 20. <laughs> but uh, I'll kind of go, you know, show you guys one more time. Recap. Number one, Evil Dead 2. Number two, Day of the Dead. Number three, Dawn of the Dead. Number four, Dream Warriors. Number five, Halloween 2. Number six, TCM 2. Number seven, Halloween 4. Number eight, uh, Dream Master. Number nine, Halloween H2O. And number ten is Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry for getting tongue-tied. Uh, just try to hurry up and get this video done because it's going to be almost 25 minutes long. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, you know, leave a comment. Do you agree with my list? Do you like my list? If not, you know, leave a comment down below what your list is. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next week on Late Night Frights. Uh, please go check out every other, uh, you know, person's video of this week. I can't wait to see what their lists are and, uh, how they differ from mine. So, again, I'll see you guys next week on Late Night Frights. Peace.